My name is Randy Howell, and you're listening to the Faith and Fishing Podcast. Welcome to the Faith and Fishing Podcast. I'm Cam. And I'm Robert. In every episode, we're bringing you faith stories and fishing memories from some amazing members of the fishing community. So join us as we shed a positive light on all things faith and fishing. Hey y'all, welcome back to the Faith and Fishing Podcast. I'm Cam. Hey, and I'm Robert. And this is the episode we've been telling you about. Uh, we got uh, a few of the, the winners from the Jackson Orr Catch Tournament um, to kind of come on and talk about the charities that they they chose to donate to. Um, before that, I want to apologize uh, because whenever you were listening to this, I need to apologize for last week. So. The time that we're recording is this week. Um, my work schedule changed and I completely lost track of what day it was. And so the episode that was supposed to come out on Tuesday, we are recording this on Wednesday night. It still has not come out yet. And I'm going to get that put out as soon as uh, we are done recording here tonight. Uh, so I want to apologize to y'all. I want to apologize to, uh, to Matt uh, for not getting his episode out on time. Um, but yeah, Robert, man, how are you doing? Hey, good, man. Just <clears throat> ready to rock and roll and uh, hear some about these guys' tournaments. Uh, we chatted with Dave Hart last week, heard about his uh, charity and his tournament. So um, I'm uh, looking forward to talking talking some more about it. Absolutely, man. Um, and before we do that, we, need, we have a couple giveaways to talk about. The first is giving away that hoodie for... 6,000 listens um, or 6,000 downloads giveaway that we had. Uh, so, Robert, I need we're going to do this really, really scientific here. All right. Um, so, we had three entries, and I need you to pick a number between one and three. Two. Two. That's the only that's the only number between one and three. <laughs> well, you could have one or three. <laughs> <laughs> Let's roll with two. Two. All right. So, um, so that is Jody. Uh, let's see. What is that Instagram handle? Bear with me for just a second. I should have had this pulled up, but I don't. And let's see. Jody Hopper um, on Instagram. Uh, I will be reaching out, uh, reaching out soon. Um, so, by the time you listen to this episode, you will have already had had me reach out to you. But. Um, but yeah, so congratulations to Jody. The other giveaway we need to talk about is the uh, the Big Faith and Vision Christmas giveaway that we do every year. Uh, so we've got some awesome prizes already. I'm still working on getting that prize pack um, completed. Uh, but at the moment, um, we are going to be giving away um, Jade's Jigs gift cards. And we are going to be giving away a Black Pack Pro. Uh, courtesy of Get Outdoors Pedal and Paddle. So um, really excited for that. Working on uh, a couple other uh, items to add to that as well. So that's going to be awesome. Um, so, yeah, uh, let's see. Robert, did you have any any announcements you wanted to, to throw out there? No, none this week. Uh, I've been working like you, crazy schedule. So I still have – well, I'll take that back. I did sneak out for two days, but the cold front came through, uh, did a little pond action and really didn't get, uh, <clears throat> didn't get anything. So, uh, just, uh, ready for this new job to slow down a little bit. And so, uh, we can uh, get back to the normal fishing schedule. Awesome. Um, I will say that this is going to be the last episode of season three. So, um, we uh, we will be taking a break over Christmas and New Year's and um, probably until middle or end of January so that we can we can get some some work done to, to get this uh, this next season as awesome as it can possibly be. Um, so, yeah, uh, looking forward to season four. But um, for now, let's go ahead. We'll have a couple words from sponsors and then um 
we'll go ahead and jump into this episode, man. All right. A huge selection and crazy fast shipping is already enough to turn heads as an online tackle shop. But Omnia Fishing sets themselves apart with their ambassador program. With Omnia, you can send in fishing reports for your local lakes that recommend baits, structure, tactics, and gear. And when another angler takes your advice and purchases something from your report, you get credit for it to spend at Omnia. The best part means that with Omnia Fishing, you can shop by lake and purchase baits and gear that are proven to work where you're fishing. To get started, go to omniafishing.com and use promo code FNF15 to save 15% on your first order. My name is... Savior Outdoors gives me confidence that no matter what happens, what I take on the water is coming back home with me. With retrieval devices for fishing rods, bow fishing bows, action cams, and even one that can be attached to your other gear, they've got your whole arsenal covered. When one of these devices goes in a drink, it releases a float attached to your gear by 60 feet of line so you can get it back, and the pressure sensitive filter means that you don't have to worry about rain or dips in the water while landing a fish. At SaveYourOutdoors.com, that's S-A-V-U-R Outdoors.com, you can use promo code FNFP15 to save 15% and try them for yourself. All right, first off, let me apologize uh, for clicking on the wrong video there. Second, I do want to add that Save Your Outdoors is uh, going to be giving away a retrieval device of the winner's choice uh, for this giveaway as well. So um, cool, cool. You, can choose, you can choose a split grip or a full handle rod retrieval device. You can choose one of the keychain rod de retrieval device or uh, retrieval devices. Um, you can choose, uh, you know, action cams um, or the, uh, the bow fishing bow if, if that is your cup of tea. But yeah, uh, Jackson, man, welcome back. I believe this may make you the most prolific uh, Faith and Fishing <laughs> guest now. <laughs> Uh, so congratulations on that honor. No, it's a pleasure to be back. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. So um, we're uh, excited to have you on to uh, to kind of talk about this uh, this tournament that uh, you put on. So I want to uh, let you go ahead and and kind of if you have any words of hope like to, to talk about this particular tournament this year and how it went and all that good stuff. Yeah, no, I mean, first of all, um, couldn't have done it with um, out everyone sharing it on Facebook, getting the word out without you guys. Um, we ended up having 109 anglers sign up and raise $2,091 for charities, um, which is simply incredible. And each of the top six, um, obviously, we're going to have some on tonight, but they got to choose um, a charity or an organization that's near and dear to their heart, which I think is super awesome. And it's really cool to see which ones are chosen. And, you know, the experience um, this year, it was a little different since it was later in the year. We saw a lot of different states than usual um, in the past uh, get up there in the top six. And a lot of different charities were chosen this year, which I thought was really cool. Yeah, for sure. All right, let's see. I am pulling up now the list here of. All right, so just to kind of run over the results of the uh, of the tournament here. So uh, in sixth place was uh, Frizzy Zamora. I hope I am pronouncing that correctly. Um, and uh, in fifth place, we had Kaysen Wallace. Fourth place, David Walker. Third place, Carl Hudson. Second place, Brett Middlebrook. And first place, we talked to him the other week, uh, Dave Hart. So um, let's go ahead. We are going to get these guys in uh, bit by bit. So Kaysen, man, welcome to the show. Um, and congratulations on that that fifth place finish, man. Um, so... Uh, if you uh, if you don't mind sharing, you don't you don't have to to share any of these of this information if you don't want to. Uh, but uh, where uh, where did you end up end up fishing? To, 
you can be as specific as a lake or as uh, or as general as a state. Uh, so I fished in like the North Alabama region. Uh, that's, it's like a local little reservoir here. Nice. Um, it's about 300 acres, something like that. We only have two, lo- you know, boat launches. We have a lot of local club tournaments here. So uh, lately, they've been pulling a lot of water, and I ended up placing like second in our local classic. So I was like, um, I had the weekend free. This gave me a chance to go fish, and I just went and slung an A rig around for a while, and ended up catching uh, like 90 something inches the first day. And I was like, oh well, I guess I can go out tomorrow and see what's up. <laughs> And uh, sure. I thought I actually ended up having a basketball game Saturday morning. So I just, I had already had Friday off of work. So I took that, felt that. And uh, Saturday, I ended up not getting back on the water till one. Same reason. It was, it was cold all weekend. So uh, went up, ended up losing like a 21 or something like that Saturday. Um, that would have kept me up there. I knew, I, I was like, there's no way that 90 inches in a month, or a weekend oh. tournament is going to hold, you know, with all these big names, even if they do do go just mess around. And uh, I was like, well, I didn't have Sunday because I, I had just taken Sunday off um, to do a little work and stuff like that. So uh, I knew I would drop. I, I think I was like in first and second the first two days, and then I dropped a day the last day I looked at the last second. I was like, before he cut it off and he had put up like a hundred and something. I was like, yeah, that, that fish hurt me, I think. <laughs> and uh, I was, then uh, I was surprised when he announced it all that I still was in the, you know, the top six or whatever and was going to get some stuff for it. And I was like, well, I guess this is cool. So, <laughs> and uh, awesome. the charity that I ended up picking was, I was like, I knew if I had won something, I was like, it was a long shot. I felt like, like I said, but I felt like if I won something and got to send some more some money to a charity, it would mean mean more than what I could have got from you know winning anything. Um, oh, absolutely. The prizes and stuff because the charity that I chose is like real, real close to me, more than anything than most. Of, not I'm not saying anything bad about anything that other guys did, but like close personal as personal level, the charity that I chose was like I don't think it could have gotten any closer home so um, for sure and person, just me personally though so and what was that charity um <clears throat> it was my um it, so ironically my mom works there but a couple of years ago before i ended up taking a uh, competitively bass fishing i was i was on hard times and i ended up having to um live on the not live on the streets but i was in and out of my mom and dad's house so uh my mom works at a homeless shelter actually downtown in birmingham Alabama and uh, the they had just moved out of an old firehouse ministry that's the name of the shelter but um, it's firehouse ministries it's a men's shelter in Birmingham and I ended up uh, staying there for a little while so um, this is in their old building so as of like a year ago they ended up getting some money oh, the, all this from donations and um, all like charity drives, all kinds of stuff. They ended up buying a $1.3 million um, housing facility for the guys down there, showers, all kinds of stuff like gated, gated parking for the employees, like my mom and stuff like that. So uh, every dollar counts now. I know that. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, that's, that's cool. Yes, and sir. I have it. I have the, the results here in terms of, what y'all posted as well so it uh yeah. in sixth place frizzy's and more had 94 and a quarter uh, in fifth grade or in fifth place <laughs> fifth place uh case you had uh 25 and a quarter uh, and david uh walker with 25 and a quarter and uh looks like uh probably had that that tiebreaker um carl hudson in third place had 96 and three quarters uh in second place, uh, Brett Middlebrook had 98 and a quarter. And then in first place, Dave Hart had 102 inches. So I broke that century mark there. But, um, but yeah, so uh, David Walker, man, welcome to the show. 
Um, we are going to try and get everybody in here at once and, and see uh, and see how this ends up going. But uh, if uh, if I end up having to, to drop somebody out, um, that's because of, of signal and not because of anything else. So, uh, David, uh, go ahead uh, and uh, tell us uh, tell us uh, where you were fishing um, as general or as specific as you'd like to be and um and let us know uh, what charity uh, you ended up donating to as well and and why you chose that okay thanks so first off thanks for having me out uh, this is probably my third or fourth podcast i've done with different different uh stations and whatnot but uh thanks for having me here um so i started out my weekend on pickwick lake uh, in counts tennessee uh, I actually started on the Florence, Alabama end of it, to be honest with you. Uh, stayed over there uh, a couple weeks prior. I was out just doing some fun fishing, and I racked up like 98 inches or so of uh, smallmouth and uh, had a really good day, like some of my, probably one of my best days of fishing, actually. Uh, so I was like, well, I'll go back down there and we'll try it again. Uh, of course, they'd unpacked their bags and moved out on me. Uh, at that point so uh, I struggled that day the first day I struggled really hard and I managed to scratch up one fish for the whole day and uh, I come back Sunday and I end up driving like an hour and a half to State Lake and it's only like a hundred acres and uh, I was like well I said I'm just gonna go down here I'm just gonna bait the brakes off this water and hope for the best I said if nothing else my money went to a good cause somewhere down the road uh, so I ended up actually catching some pretty good fish that day. Uh, I actually went back and won another tournament a week later on that same lake. Uh, but uh, done really well down there. It was uh, Lake Monroe and uh, Aberdeen or Amory, Mississippi. Uh, got down there and just, I mean, they was chasing bait and they was two baits I threw a lipless and a hay rig, and they was just wearing it out. Uh, I think I end up, I think I only end up catching a, a limit, but you know they was good quality fish, uh, and I'm one that generally I watch the scoreboard religiously, and I shouldn't. I've been told by many people quit looking at the scoreboard because I get in my head, you know, hey, you're sucking it up, you got to do this, you got to have this, you know. Uh, so that was actually one of those days where I didn't look at the scoreboard. I just went out there and I thought I'm just going to fun fish, I'm going to enjoy it, have a good time. Uh, do what I know and uh, actually ended up got to look and I was like oh man I'm sitting in like third place right now that's awesome and then I didn't get the idea he did turn him in right there at the last minute I call it rat holing Dave you rat hold your fish until the very last minute and I look and I was like that's what I caught him I was two inches yeah <laughs> You know, I like, man, I said, there's always that one person, always that one person. <laughs> and uh, so I told my wife, I come home and she was like, well, how'd you do? I was like, well, I'm sitting in third place right now. I said, but there's always that one person that's going to gonna hold her fish <laughs> until the very last minute. And sure enough, she said, well, look at it and see where you're sitting. So I checked it out. And it's, uh, it showed 102 inches in the first place. I was like, yep, let me just throw in that hat right there. <laughs> and, uh, so you know i just kind of sat there and i was kind of beating myself up a little bit over it i was like i, I gotta do better i gotta hold my fish i gotta i gotta quit letting people see my cards here and i'm gonna start and i'm gonna do people this way and uh but uh you know i chose a <clears throat> i actually had a hard choice uh a hard decision to make i guess with the, the charities because there's several local charities that uh people i know that are putting on and part of or you know I try to support everybody as much as I can. I, I'm real big in the shop local, do local stuff. Uh, so I actually end up going with uh, the Boonville Junior Auxiliary, which is in my hometown, home county, uh, that I live here uh, in Prentice County. And they do uh, every year, they do a, I'm sure everybody does it somewhere, but uh, they do what they call an angel tree. And she actually is one of my sponsors. Her business is one of my sponsors as well for fishing. But she had uh, hit me up and she was like, uh, she actually paid my entry fee for the tournament and everything. And she was like, so 
uh, for picking a charity, I've got one in mind. If, if you do some, if you do good, you know, I've got one in mind for you. And I was like, well, lay it on me. You know, I'm, I'm all ears. And she was like, you know, we do the angel tree. And we've got this year, they had a big increase. Uh, of course, I'm sure everybody's heard the news. Uh, big furniture place had laid off over here uh, with plants in California. I think they had a plant in like North Carolina or South Carolina or something over there. Uh, but they had to shut the doors and kick, I think, lost, fired 2,700 employees or so. Wow. And so a lot of the, the a lot of those people, the bigger plants, they had like, I think they had like 10 or 12 plants kind of scattered around right here. Uh, warehouses and different things, different different legs of that whole pro uh, project. And so a lot of people had lost their jobs and was putting their kids on the angel tree. And um, there's other places that was letting go of employees and stuff for the year because COVID's starting to show how detrimental it was on, on the economy and on businesses and whatnot. So everybody was, she said they had like 300 and something kids, 360 something kids on the angel tree that parents had put them on, they wasn't going to get to have a Christmas or nothing like that. And, uh, so I just kind of, it kind of hit me a little hard and it kind of makes me think my boys are sitting right here, you know, and I might get a little teary out here for a minute. So you'll have to excuse me, but you know, I, I can't imagine not being able to have a Christmas for my kids or, uh, being able to kind of see their faces light up when they open up a gift that they wanted or, uh, just a gift in general. Uh, so I decided to go with them and uh, donate my $209.10, which wasn't a lot of money, but uh, it did help uh, furnish somebody, kids, with us Christmas this year. That's awesome. <clears throat> and Casey, I did not ask you um, if somebody that's listening to the podcast um, and is like, that charity stands out to me. Is there a way that I can donate to that? Um, is there is there some place that you know that that you can send them to to make that donation? You can just make the check out, or you can make the payment out to the Firehouse Ministries. <clears throat> it's just the Firehouse Ministries. That's uh, <laughs> that's as plain as simple as it can be. Awesome. And uh, and David, what about uh, what about you? I would have to go back and look at the address okay. and stuff that she told she gave me to send the check to because I didn't even know where to send the check. To be honest with you. But if anybody's listening and would be interested in donating to that, uh, to whether it be here, uh, but uh, the Junior Auxiliary is what the group is called. Uh, you can find me on Facebook, uh, message me, uh, something like that. I'll send you the email uh, or the email the address that she gave me uh, to awesome. mail any money to. Awesome. And I will do my best to, if y'all don't mind uh, either sending that to me or I will I'll do my best to find that information. I can put that in the show notes for anybody that's listening. And, well, now that, um, now that he said that, uh, there's a go you can just Google it, and it's like it just comes up as the first thing. It's Fire Ministries, Firehouse Ministries dot org. I'm pretty sure if I'm not mistaken. So, awesome. Not entirely sure what that was, but. <laughs> um, well, like but yeah, so, uh, just a uh, breaking news. Uh, we're gonna have some uh, some uh, some lures from Mr. B Lure Company thrown in to that giveaway as well. So uh, that uh, that Christmas giveaway is gonna be gonna be pretty awesome. But yeah, Dave, uh, welcome back. Um, we can uh, that that beard is still looking absolutely phenomenal, my man. Um, so we, we talked uh, a couple weeks ago about, uh, about your, your day on the water. And I, I really, really, what we really talked about was that, that last, last couple hours or so. Um, but yeah, um, kind of give us just a, a quick recap of, of your, your time on the water there and, and, and your, your charity of choice. Sure. Yeah. So thanks for having me back. And, uh, Nice to see the other guys here too. I, I can come around and definitely want to give a shout out and thanks to Jackson because I've I've had like Christmas Day little deliveries from the sponsors and everything. It's been kind of cool. So, um, so I definitely want to circle back on that. I, I missed the kickoff thing, so I'm sure that's in the in the cards. But um, yeah, I'll try to be short and sweet. I mean, most of the details were were on the last podcast, so uh, I know David must he needs to go back and listen to it because it was. Yeah, I learned I learned pretty early on a sandbag is not the way to make make friends. So uh, believe it or not, it was it was a struggle, man. It was uh, you know going into it, you know, it was, was kind of just you know 
yeah, it wasn't coincidence. It was meant to be right place, right time. I knew I could fish Friday morning a little bit and I could fish Sunday. Um, and so really going into it, Friday was only my, my true intentional day to like try and, and put something on the board. And, you know, we talked last time, like I was so concerned about fall turnover on our lakes here. Um, you know, I knew with the weather that, you know, it could be good for, for our lakes around here, but the, the turnover was probably going to happen that week. And, uh, as y'all know, that can shut it down. So Friday went to a spot where, um, you know, it, that wouldn't have been a, an issue and uh, had caught some big fish in the past and absolutely got skunked. Like didn't even get a bite on of anything. Um, and I kind of knew it, you know, made a bad decision, but, um, you know, went out, uh, Sunday and, uh, Really, I was, that was a couple of days before my, my birthday. So it was kind of going to be my birthday trip, go catch a big one or whatever. And, um, you know, went into it kind of just relaxed and, uh, fished a local lake here and smack down middle of North Carolina, a little municipal lake. Um, most of all the local guys around here know it well. So you can probably figure it out. But, uh, you know, showed up Sunday and, and le- legitimately was the only one in the parking lot. Like I couldn't believe it. Like usually there's, yeah, a couple of crappie fishermen, even a couple of bass fishermen, you know, you see half a dozen out there and it was completely vacant and I had the place myself. And, uh, you know, first part of the day thought it was another bad decision. Cause I went from, I caught on the water a little late. It was, it was pretty chilly. You know, it was in the twenties that night. And, uh, I got on the lake about nine 30. Um, and I didn't get a first bite until 1245. Um, so the first bass I caught was a good one, uh, 20 and a half, I think it was, and uh, had kind of just been bebopping all around this area that's that's been good to me in the past this time of year, and uh, it just wasn't happening. I was almost getting ready to peel out when I when I caught the first one, and uh, I don't, you know, it was just meant to be. I looked up kind of an area I was already at in the morning. It was it was desolate, and um, looked up and I saw one bass bust, um, which I figured they would be doing, you know, like. like you know, in the previous podcast I was talking like, you know, two and a half weeks prior to this, we fished an event and we had water temperatures in the upper sixties and all that weather change came in. I'm sure y'all experienced it too. We had 54 degree water temperatures. Um, but anyway, saw the one bus be bopped over there and it was just unbelievable night and day. What, what I was showing on the electronics. Um, just, I don't know where these, bait fish came from i mean it was they were in the tens of thousands hundreds of thousands and there was just big bass just chewing all through them um every every depth of the water column um and so really that like the flurry started about 1 30 um and i fished till right at i, I told myself where i was i needed to leave about 3 30 to get back in time for the ramp and everything to close and especially if i'm the only one out there i know like they're like piddling their thumbs frustrated at me being out there um but i pushed the limits and uh, i fished till about 345 and then in that two and hours and 15 minute span i mean i caught 18 bass a uh, couple catfish i mean it was just insane um i lost a couple big ones you know um kind of early on in the flurry and i just i pushed myself to uh fish till about 345 i caught the last 21 incher and uh i pushed it some more and fished about 355 and what made a normally an hour run and i did it in 35 minutes and hustled to get all my stuff loaded up i had the biggest charlie horse of my life getting in my truck because like i was just i mean i don't have a motor or anything i was just getting it um pedaling back and so long story short that all the fish got uploaded i you know i told myself like i had to get out of the out of the lake you know so they could uh close up shop and so ran up the road to uh to a shopping center and pulled in and uploaded the five right down there. So yeah, guilty as charged. I sandbagged for about three hours, but really it was all last minute that last day. And it was just, it was insane, man. It's, it's, and the other cool thing, like, um, now I've been, I've been knocking on the door a couple times, but it was the first, uh, you know, hundred inch day period, you know, and let alone doing a tournament for me. So one day was, was really cool. And, um, you know, it, it was just, yeah, right place, right time. And it was, I'll, you know, I've been back to that same area twice since, uh, that was on a Sunday, obviously. And then I went back the day before Thanksgiving, caught a couple, you know, 18 inch class fish, but nothing near like what it was on that Sunday. And then oddly enough, went back this past Sunday, um, 
very similar conditions and absolutely stumped. Like everything disappeared and and I chalk it up to, you know, I think we've we've been really clouded in here. Um like we had like ten or eleven days in a row of clouds and I think too much of a good thing is a bad thing. And those those fish are just in that little funk where they know it's getting cold, but it hadn't quite got that cold, and and so they'll fire up again, and we'll have fun with them. But yeah, I mean, it was just it was an unbelievable, you know, three hours on the water, um, and a lot of frustration up to that point. So <laughs> absolutely, and uh, remind everybody uh, what charity uh, you chose and why. Yeah, so um, you know, I, it's really cool to hear these stories are like close to home, and and you know, I kind of kicking myself for, for uh, you know, not doing more research or trying to think of something locally here, but, you know, it, it doesn't mean that, you know, it was meant to be where I, where I chose and that's with the, the save JT, uh, dot com foundation. And you know, the quick story of that is it just came full circle to me because I was in the building at the Bassmaster Classic in Texas when, uh, when uh, we found out about it and Joe McElroy, um, you know, brought it to light. He, he donated his winnings for that tournament and, and got the whole kayak clean on board. And uh, I got to fish against Joe um, at KFL this year. So, you know, I just, just, you know, went up to him before we launched and, and just shook his hand and said, hey, man, that was awesome. Like, you know, that was really cool to see and, and to be there in person. And it's nice to meet you kind of thing. And um, didn't think of it at the time. That was back in August, I guess. And so when I was debating, I was like, you know, that makes sense. Like, I, you know, anything um, to get true that, that uh, to JT, I mean, He's just a he's a he's a warrior man. He's a little warrior, and and you know every odds against him, and he keeps knocking them down. And and I have to say too, the cool thing was, um, you know, on a personal level. I know we were working through Jackson with with figuring out how to get them, you know, paid or whatever, because they just had to go fund me. And he had reached out to to Jason, uh, JT's dad, and uh, got through to him and and figured that out. And and you know, I just felt the need. I, I just messaged Jason, just say, hey, I, you know, I know you just got contacted. Here's the story real quick. And just gave him the quick and dirty and. He was so cool, man. He's like, here's my number. Give me a call. And so he took the time out of his day and he's a busy dude. And, um, you know, just, you know, we had a quick, cool chat about, you know, life and, and fishing and, and what his goals are and, and JT and all that stuff. And, um, yeah, I mean, just saw the earth guy and, and it goes back to the same thing. It's like, you know, to put, to put yourself in his shoes where, you know, I, you know, I'm blessed to fish, you know, with very little distraction in my life. And you know, we all have ups and downs and all that, but nothing like that where, you know, he's, he's juggling that with, with chasing his dream, you know, of fishing and, and, you know, just being able to do that and, and stay level headed and, and, you know, still have focus on, on his boy and everything. So, you know, it, 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 it came full circle. It felt right. still feels right. And, and, and happy to be able to contribute. So. That's awesome. Well, I am about to turn uh, Robert loose on asking uh, <laughs> questions as our, as our resident tournament uh, expert, but uh, before we do that, Jackson, I wanted uh, you to go over the three other charities that were donated to. Um, so if you wouldn't mind doing that, sir. Yeah, so um, Brett Middlebrook, uh, he's actually a 17-year-old. Uh, he got he got set, or second place, and he chose um, Love in the Name of Christ. And uh, Carl Hudson, um, he got third place. He actually, I think it was my first... Yeah, my first charity tournament I ever hosted, um, he got a top three finish there as well. And this time he chose um, Love or um, Alzheimer's Association. And then um, Brizzy Zamora, he got second place and he uh, chose uh, the St. Jude organization. Awesome. So uh, just a quick Google search here uh, because I was not familiar with it, but love in the name of Christ. Um, so it is. Uh, looks like it is a. Says helping churches help people. Um, so they mobilize local churches to offer a uh, holistic approach to caring for people in all areas of life, spiritual, mental, emotional, relational. Uh, material and physical. So, um, yeah, so that Alzheimer's uh, Association and uh, and St. Jude's. Um, so all all phenomenal charities that everybody chose and a really wide range, um, it seems, of, of a lot of different uh, different people who are who are impacted by this tournament. So that is awesome. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I am going to 
release Robert now from uh, and let him <laughs> ask the question. Yeah. No, I sorry. think uh, I think tournament. First of all, tournament expert is a big big stretch. Okay, <laughs> um, but really, I mean, keep it easy since we have uh, more people than normal on, but. Um, we'll start out with, uh, with case and just kind of run down, like what you normally fish. Are you doing all online? Do you do some local stuff? Shout out your local club. Uh, if you got some local club tournaments that you do and then, uh, just give us a rundown of maybe how you got into fishing and, and, and the tournament side of it. Okay, so, uh, I fish here in Coleman, Alabama. Uh, shout out to Coleman kayak anglers, I guess, because, uh, that's who I started with for, for the most part sorry uh and then when i started i haven't been competitively fishing or at a kayak more or less or any kind of boat let's say for the past um for only three years really two and a half uh i started competitively bass fishing probably about yeah three years ago um i bought a canoe an old town canoe about two and a half years ago um uh, started to go flip some bushes because i used to do it growing up you know walk in the bank you know see a lay down you know go throw to it and uh put my boat in some local lakes and found some little black sloughs caught some fish put it on facebook and then uh somebody from one of the groups i can't remember who it was was like hey you should come over and uh um <clears throat> come fish with us after i'd found all this stuff on facebook and he had shown me Turney X, all this other stuff, and I'd kind of given it the push off or ignored it for a couple months, and then I decided, well, might as well. I ended up joining one of their first, like, month-longs. It was best five or something like that. Ended up getting, like, a second or third place, and, you know, only 10, 15 people, and I, I was like, well, I can win some actual money doing this. You know, it's 20 bucks, maybe. I came with it in the month, but I was like, well, that's pretty cool. So I was like, uh ended up looking up for some more groups um got a better kayak ended up getting a new canoe flint about a year and a half ago uh did a lot of local stuff around here coosa river guys um did some iron city so this is the birmingham area kayak anglers guys group um did a couple of their events kind of the throwdowns and then i ended up getting an old time sportsman this last year and kind of hit it hard with the coleman guys locally and uh, ended up probably, I think if I would have paid the entries at the beginning of the year, probably like second or tied for first of the angler of the year for the local club here. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, I ended up second in the classic for our uh, local club, went to state and blew it. <laughs> um, but I, I, I haven't got into the Hobie, you know, the whole big deal. I, I actually, um, personal friends with Chad Hoover and the guy, you know, he, founder of kbf so uh we ended up the, the one of the lakes i ended up i said one of the lakes but i ended up, i think i fished two lakes for this event um for the weekend but the the one i mentioned we ended up um filming a episode for valley sports or something so uh i've gotten more in depth into it since the longer i've run so i'm only three years now and i guess we're going going up from here not going down so hopefully yeah cool well, that that's a sounds like uh sounds like you're doing doing pretty well um just make sure you pay those dang entry fees at the first of the year this next year so you can uh <laughs> well, so you yeah, can, like yeah, so you, yeah yeah get in on that points deal yeah, yeah. i pay mine and i know mine's usually a waste but uh just because I, I don't I don't ever do that good in those I but I thought it was a waste so I was like I had a grudge against them yeah. I was like I'm not gonna pay $15 <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna even get in the classic and then I ended up you know tied for first for one of the guys that ended up like three time I think through all four of the local clubs he ended up winning angler years so it was gotcha. kind of neck and neck with him all year well, that's good it sounds like you had a great year at, um david kind of same thing for you man just kind of give us a rundown of, of what you normally fish and your your local stuff and and kind of how you got started in it i guess i've always fished i mean growing up before i got married i was fishing with a buddy of mine he had a bass boat uh it was always me and him were both cops and so we kind of worked the same shift and 
we was like, well, on our off days, you know, we'll go fishing. We started out with on night shifts, we'd night fish or whatever. And uh, it was always go out there, hey, man, I'm, I'm, I'm going to make a bet with you tonight. You know, I'll buy you breakfast in the morning if I catch more, uh, if you catch more fish than me, uh, so on and so on. Or I'll buy you dinner at work next shift or whatever. Uh, so we, you know, done some little friendly wagers and it kind of got into that. And I won a little bit here and there. Most time I was having to buy his dinner all the time and it broke me. I ended up having to leave being law enforcement and find a real job. Uh, so he, uh, he kind of kept me entangled in fishing all in general. And then, uh, I actually hit a, I don't know if you want to call it a little hard time or what you want to call it. Really. I just, I had, I don't know. Y'all know how expensive fishing gear is. I think I had like 15 rods, I don't know, four or five tackle, uh, bags, just full of 3,700 series trays, just loaded down. And I actually got to just a hard time in my life, just aggravated, I guess. And I just sold it all. Uh, guy asked me, so how much you want for it? And I said, man, give me $250. You can have it all. And he was like, I'll give you 300 here. And, uh, he gave it to me, took it. I mean, I watched it walk away and I was like, I just screwed up. So then I just kind of <laughs> laid low for a little while and, uh, I ended up kind of easing my way back into it and I ended up buying a bass boat and I was like, all right, I'm back into fishing. Uh, on the bass boat like two months and it cost me like four grand just to get the parts fixed on it and started falling apart and I was like okay we're getting rid of this bad boy and uh, so I'm sitting there thinking well, what's a cheaper alternative to fish out of that can get me you know off the bank and uh, so I was sitting there fishing off the bank one day and I saw a guy come in just throw a kayak in went out there fishing I was like there's the light God has sent me right there there's my sign I'm on kayak fish and uh so I started out with a Vibe Seaghost, a 13-footer. And good Lord, let me tell you what, that's a beast to handle when you're loading in and out of the back of a truck, by the way. Uh, so I started out, and I was just doing just some little friendly buddy-buddy fishing stuff around here and just kind of getting a feel for everything. And I uh, ended up joining a group uh, called uh, North Mississippi Kayak Fishing Association. Uh, and they, we, I kind of left that group since then, but uh, that's another rabbit to be chased. But I started another group called Top of the Sip Kayak Trail and uh, start uh, a competitive fishing. They wasn't the group I was in wasn't really competitive. Uh, me, I'm I'm 100% hardcore competitive, um, and I get real aggravated real easy when people don't show the dedication that I show and the, the competitiveness that I show. It gets get kind of aggravates me a little bit. But I've learned to start winging off that a little bit and just kind of going out and having fun. But then I started that, and I was like, you know what? I enjoy this tournament stuff. So I jumped in feet first, eyes closed. I jumped right in the Bassmaster Kayak Series, uh, traveling with them uh, two years ago. Two, yeah, going on two years ago now. Uh, and then last year I started, I, I eased into them really honestly. I kind of fished a couple of local guy tournaments with them uh, that was close to me. I say not local, but they was close to me within six hours drives. Uh, and then last year, of course, I started out the season with them at Lake Fort. And, if it could go wrong, it went wrong. From driving, making an eight and a half, nine hour drive to Lake Fort, turned in like 14 hours of driving because this massive ice storm comes through. Yeah. And uh, get over, like, I was my intentions was leave late Wednesday night, get there Thursday morning at daybreak, start practicing all day. And then uh, I had an Airbnb with several other guys that was fishing it. And uh, so I get over there Thursday morning, like almost lunchtime nearly. And, uh, I walk, I pull up, and I was like, what are y'all doing? Why ain't nobody free fishing? They was like, you looked at your boat lately? I was like, yeah, it's covered in ice. And he's like, have you looked at ours? And I was like, no. Go out there and look at theirs, and there's like ice that thick. And uh, wow. just all over everything. So we spent the better part of the rest of the day Thursday uh, trying to figure out how we were going to follow the boats out so we could even practice Friday. And uh, so we was trying all the tricks and the trades we could come up with, which – worked for about an hour and we was like, we're just going to pour boiling water in them, hot water in them. And, uh, lo and behold, that worked great until the crap refroze. Uh, so then Saturday morning, <laughs> uh, we didn't get no practice whatsoever. So Saturday morning I took off, broke my steering cables right out the gate. As soon as I put in the water, I mean, it just snapped the cable and I was like, crap. Uh, so I tried it and the wind was blowing. I was like, yeah, you know, trying to hold a rod and trying to paddle this way, paddle that way, do this right here. Uh, trying to just to steer the main thing was I was doing was trying to steer. I had a pedal drive at that time. And, uh, so I kind of got down on that and I was like, all right, I'm done. I'm not doing this competitive crap no more. 
uh, you know, it just, it ain't worth it to me. And then I got back into it with the West Tennessee Bash Yakers. I fished like three or four tournaments in a row with them. I uh, traveled with them up to Kentucky Lake and all over West Tennessee a little bit. Uh, they actually come down here to some of the home ponds here. Uh, and I, I was actually finishing like top 10 in the first two or three tournaments I fished with them. So I was like, okay, all right, I'm getting my groove back here. You know, I'm getting into this thing here. And uh, just kind of escalated after that. So now I actually direct the top of the SIP kayak trail. I'm actually tournament director for that. Uh, I'm fishing it, West Tennessee. Uh, the guys down at Central Mississippi want me to come fish with them a little bit. Uh, I don't know that I'm going to make that, uh, but maybe who knows. And then Bassmaster Series, I'm probably not even going to get to finish it at all this year. The closest they're coming to me is Lake Gunnersville. So uh, it was just kind of an addiction, uh, if you will. Uh, from the first time I put a rod in my hand, uh, I, I went up and down, throwing them away, said I ain't doing it no more, threatened to sell my boat and everything. Of course, now I'm sitting out there. I just put live scope on it. Um, I'm really eager to get out there and get on that and see how that works out for me because uh, I've seen what it can do for folks, and I disagree with it. I hate it with a passion, but you can't beat them, so you might as well join them. Uh, <laughs> so went ahead and jumped out on that limb, spent that money, and uh, it's just a, uh, my wife hates me for it every day. Uh, <laughs> it's an addiction that I can't kick. And she was helping me a while ago make out schedule for our group. And I'm having to go around like four other groups that we're fishing. Some of us are fishing in them. So I'm trying to schedule around all these other guys. And uh, so I start naming off dates. I was like, are you working this weekend? Are you off this weekend? Can I fish this weekend? She looks, she's like, you just named off like five weekends in one month that you're fishing. I was like, yeah. She's like, do we fit in there anywhere? I was like, yeah, on the weekend, on the month, there's only four weekends. That's where I'll get you in at. Uh, but, you know, so I'm just kind of, I'm waist deep in it. And I just, I, I don't know that I could be happier with the a hobby that I've chosen or uh, whatever you want to call it. But, uh, man, I absolutely love it. I wouldn't trade it for the world. And if anybody out there is listening, if, if you're on the fence about kayak fishing, uh, or you've never done it, and this is your first time listening to the show because somebody you know is on it tonight, uh, I highly recommend that you, you get out there and give it a shot and try it. Uh, I've been in a bass boat. Many, I'm sure most of us here have been in a big bass boat before and probably still fish out of one today too. But, you know, kayak fishing, there's just to me, there's nothing like it. It's, it's a challenge from getting that thing in the water to getting out of the water. It, it's a, all Everything's a challenge. So yeah, yeah. that's kind of my little backstory there. Sorry if I tied up a little too much time on that. <laughs> no, that's fine. That's fine. That, that was, uh, that was perfect. So, I mean, I just, I'm the same way. I, I love everything about it. And, you know, you were kind of trying to figure out what to call it. I mean, it's an addiction. I think everybody sitting here <laughs> oh, yeah. on this thing, it will tell you it's an addiction, whether it's kayak fishing or, or, you know, big boat, uh, either way. But I, I think the, I think the kayak thing, there's just something, there's just something a little different about it. So I agree totally with it. Uh, Addiction is one word. Obsession is the other one. I would. Yeah. Use. Yeah. The only thing that comes oh, close to it crazy. is, yeah. The only thing that comes close to it in my book is, is waterfowl hunting. And that's, that's right now a close second, but um, yeah, that was a good rundown. And uh, I know Dave, Dave Hart, we went over, last time a couple weeks for all your stuff so you guys go back and listen to, to dave's story on that from uh it'll be two episodes ago once this one was out and then i'm just going to kick it back to cam and see uh what what else you got uh for tonight well the the only other main thing that i wanted to uh to make sure that we got to do was have everybody you know i uh, shout out uh shout out sponsors and supporters and anybody you want to say thank you to uh, tell us where to follow you or if you've got some sort of uh, social media or YouTube channel or anything like that, make sure you plug that. Um, and uh, we can we can start with Dave and, and work our way uh, back to Case. And uh, so, Dave, go for it, man. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, you know, as far as sponsors that we covered last time, like, you know, no personal sponsors or anything, just, you know, fishing with the KFL last year and this upcoming year, those team sponsors we have and, We'll be rolling that out, you know, in here in the near future um, as we get rolled up. Um, and uh, but yeah, I mean, I, I I was thinking as you were going through, like you know, back to to where you got started with fishing. And this will tie into the thanks, but 
I guess I got kind of a thing going on with full circle because I was thinking like, you know, the first fish I actually remember catching and, and actually, you know, falling in love with fishing was I actually lived in Indiana. So Jackson's neck of the woods, kind of the opposite side of the state. I lived on the on the Wabash River uh, below Lafayette in a little town. And I just remember, you know, we'd uh, either go to Morgan Rose State Park and, and fish a little just bobber cork fishing. And um, we had a little catfish stock pond across the river we'd go to fish there a couple of crappy quarries and things like that and had a buddy that had a, a house up on a little chain of lakes i don't i don't know exactly where it is in north central indiana but somewhere probably not too far to the west where jackson's from so uh full circle but that leads me to just say thanks to to jackson man i'm just blown away that you know this thing has become what it is just in the five short years he's been doing it and you know, I'm thinking back, you know, never, never really talked to him before, but just, you know, understanding how, uh, you know, how young he is and, and the, the head he's got on his shoulders to be doing this, you know, I'm certainly wouldn't be doing this at my age, like, you know, sitting in the college dorm room or whatever. I'm just guessing, writing out checks and talking to sponsors and getting all this lined up. And, and it's just amazing. Like, so kudos to you, Jackson, for, for putting this together and, and getting the whole, you know, the, 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 you know, getting over a hundred people to sign up is, is awesome. And, you know, you know, I'll do my part going forward to to advertise it and, and try to double that. You know, for the years to come and and, and keep keep it growing. Um, it's been so cool. Like the sponsors are just just awesome. Like I mean, it's unbelievable. It's like Christmas morning every other day. Like something will pop in the on the doorstop, and I'm like, wow, that's cool. wow, that's amazing. That's amazing. Um, <laughs> you know, and aside from that, just you know, like heck, I even got a personal message from from one of them. It was the, the real tree fishing um, guy sent me a personal email. I said, hey man. You know, congratulations, but sorry we hadn't got your package out. We had Black Friday and all this stuff. I'm like, why? You don't apologize for that. Like, I'm, you know, thank you. <laughs> so, just just the support and, and the professionalism, you know, from these sponsors and, and stepping up. It's not easy, and you know, I mean, you all know how it is, how hard it is, just personal sponsors or, or team sponsors or whatever. So, all the organization, all the behind the scenes, I can't imagine how much work went into it. So, so Jackson, kudos, man, and, and I wish you nothing but the best. Uh, you know, in your career and in your growth and getting out of school and wherever you're at and all that stuff. So thank, um, just thank you so much. It, that really means a lot to me. And thank you for signing up, supporting the event, supporting me. I mean, I couldn't do it without you guys. Awesome, man. No, thank you. That's all I got. <clears throat> all right. And uh, David, what about you, man? Yeah, I want to uh, give a huge shout out first and foremost to my biggest supporter, my wife, uh, both financially, mentally. <laughs> uh, she makes the bread. She she does all that. So I work for the state, so I don't make no money. So she does all that for me. So without her, that's ain't, none of this would happen because she went and picked the boat up for me and everything. So, but first foremost, I want to thank her for all her support and her traveling with me and sleeping in tents and at 28 degrees outside on the edge of Lake Gunners or the north wind and uh, you know itches fishing elusive baits ant sports hub uh vector hooks titan tungsten all you guys um they provide me with some excellent fishing products if you're not using if you're not sponsored by anybody uh and you're you're looking for something to you know some good products check out vector hooks oh man them, them hooks are freaking awesome uh titan tungsten they make some really good tungsten weights in my opinion um uh, Get on guys a shout out and check them out all the products um really that's pretty much the only one uh, you know my main sponsors there um uh, i just thanks jackson for putting this on this is actually i didn't answer this question a while ago when i was actually supposed to i guess um as far as online fishing this is actually this one was my very first online fishing tournament uh I've, I've always done in person uh hand to hand you know no paypal nothing like that but this is my very first online uh since then i've exceeded a little bit and i've done uh, fixing to finish my third socks and cookies online event and if y'all have never heard of that i think most of y'all probably fished it already i think i remember seeing yeah. some names on there <laughs> um so you know anybody that's listening if y'all kayak fish and we'll do some online fishing socks and cookies does a really good thing for our, our military um they're doing a winter trail right now um next, next one's in january i don't know the date it's on tourney x or it was i think you took it down to make some changes but uh y'all give them a look on facebook 
Uh, if anybody wants to follow me, you're more than welcome to. My Facebook's at day. Uh, I think it's either David Walker Fishing or DW Fishing. I can't remember. Or maybe D Walker Fishing. I got like five accounts and uh, every one of them got a different name. So either David Walker Fishing, DW Fishing, D Walker Fishing. It's one of those on Instagram, Twitter, uh, TikTok, Facebook. Uh, my Snapchat is just David Walker 52. So. <laughs> Uh, so anybody wants to come follow me, y'all come on, give me a follow. Uh, I'll follow you back, and we'll watch each other grow uh, as anglers uh, and brag each other on when we catch those big ones. Because everybody likes to be bragged on when they catch a big one. I know I do. But awesome. thanks for having me, guys. That, that was that's pretty awesome being on here, you guys tonight. Uh, I appreciate that. And Jackson, again, I appreciate you putting on this awesome event. I actually look forward to fishing with you again next year. Thank you. Um, what you're doing is really awesome. Dave kind of hit the nail on the head and summed everything up for pretty much for what I have to say. Um, you know, what you're doing at the age of 19 in the college dorm room would not be anything I would imagine I would have been doing. Uh, I'm 37 year old. <laughs> uh, so, you know, kudos to that. Hats off to you on that, man. Uh, and, and Jackson, do, do you, fit, you fish college level, right? Uh, yes, sir. Yep, I fish college, um, Hobies. I mean, everything really. Okay. okay, cool. Yeah, that's the the only series I haven't stepped off into yet is Hobie series, and I'm kind of iffy about it because they 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 fish way away from where I live at, and I just I ain't about those 13, 14 hour drives <laughs> up in the Sequoia River or whatever it's called, and yeah. Champlain <laughs> and all up in there. I, I can't handle that. I ain't out of a big boy yet. Yeah, I'm gonna have a few of those this or next year, I guess. <laughs> we'll see how that goes. Well, good Absolutely. luck to you, that brother. But again, thanks for everything you did, man. It, it was an awesome, awesome event uh, to see 109 anglers sign up and kind of put up the money that was put up. That that's awesome. No, thank you so much for the support. Absolutely. I was no joke. He, he's 19, so he can drive 19 hours or two hours of sleep and not miss it. <laughs> I know. I 35 was a cut off for me. I just turned 40. so. <laughs> yeah, I can drive an hour when I'm looking for a cup of coffee or an energy drink or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, David, you, I'm right there with you. I'm I'm 35, and I know myself you know, at, at 19, uh, I mean – Right now, I'm not organized enough to put something like this on at 19. <laughs> There's absolutely no way that I could have even like, come close to it. And the fact that this is his fifth one, like, yeah, <laughs> that's the part that really blows my mind. But yeah, yeah that, 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 that trips me out. You're talking what? What is that? 14, 14. You was 14 when you first started this. 14. Did yeah, I'm, I'm actually I'm 20. Crap. I'm 20 now. Yeah, oh, okay. I was. I was 15. I was 15. Okay. Even still, wow! I mean, how many fifteen-year-olds do you see trying to put on a charity tournament uh, for not just a charity of his choice, like you know, charity everywhere uh, of, of yeah. anglers' choices? You know, how many fifteen-year-olds are thinking like that? No, it's I mean, a, absolutely, absolutely amazing, man. I mean, that's um, that's 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 astonishing. That's, I don't even know what to say to it. That's just that's a, that's astonishing right there, man. That's awesome. It's crazy how much has grown over the years, too. I mean sponsors i mean people signing up i mean it has kind of declined over the years a little bit like the, my third annual one we had 247 and then it's kind of got a little lower um but i'm confident those numbers are going to get up and one day i feel like over the years i feel like we can reach that 1000 anglers i think we can oh Absolutely. yeah we'll we'll get her there we'll we'll get her there Awesome. Well, Kason, what about you, man? Uh, go ahead, shout out those sponsors, supporters, anybody you want to say thank you to and plug your social media and uh, uh, YouTube, any kind of content that you're putting out there. So my mom and dad, for most part, uh, I'm young, just like Jackson. I'm only 25, but uh, I'm also married, my wife too, but uh, they put up with my crap and my spending habits and my addiction, as we call it. Um, other than that, I really don't have any sponsors. I want to shout out uh, Joe Drowns. He's a local tournament director here. Um, he just started a group up over the past year at Yak and Grass. It's a Gunnersville-based uh, tournament. We'll have them all over Gunnersville um, for 2023. But uh, he's the one who actually told me about Jackson's tournament. I had seen it over the past couple of years and 
in the scene and just didn't know. I originally thought it was for him for some reason. Someone had, I guess, had told me it was for him or a charity for something that he had going on in his life, but I didn't know. So I just, it was always later in the year. I was doing dugout um, online, so I, I just passed it up, I guess. I don't know why. And he had this, like I said earlier in the podcast, I, it was just I had the weekend. So I, he said, why don't you sign up? And I was like, well, it's for charity. It, like David said, my, my 20 bucks is going to wind up somewhere good, even if I don't win. So it was like that. They, they both said, they like they said, it's, I mean, that's, I don't know. I wouldn't be doing that at 15, 16. I was worried about girls in the car at 15 or 16. <laughs> Not fishing. Uh, I had to have kids to worry about fishing <laughs> and getting out of the house. But um, other than that, I, I mean, the sponsors here, <laughs> the guys uh, the guys here, um, the sponsors that came in uh, for the tournament, I mean, like he's, Dave said, it's like Christmas every day. My wife jokes, it's like, are you sure you got fifth place? Because you keep getting stuff. Uh, are you sure Jackson didn't um, misplace you for the first place winner? I was like, I, I don't know. Uh, uh, so, yeah, it's it's awesome to have a $100 and $200 pair of sunglasses that my dad says will wind up at the bottom of the lake. So, um, <laughs> living higher life now. So, that's about it. Awesome. Thanks for having awesome. me on here. That, too. That was other than that. Absolutely. And, and Jackson, I uh, wanted to let you shout out all the sponsors that, uh, that helped out and made, made this tournament possible. Yeah. Um, there were a lot of sponsors for this tournament. Um, they're actually, uh, companies that I've worked with in the past and have personal relationships with, which makes it even more special to me. And I, I just couldn't be grateful for all of those companies. I'm, I'm not going to name them. Uh, you can go to my Facebook. I mean, they're all over my posts. Um, they're just, I mean, the companies are amazing, but the individuals behind them, um, for them supporting this event over the years is just super, um, super special and means a lot to me. And I mean, they donated a lot of great prizes, a lot of expensive prizes. And, um, it's just, it's super cool to, um, you know, see them do that. And I feel like uh, it's going to get even better over the years to come. So, and I, I want to thank you guys for having um, me on and, you know, getting everyone on tonight. It's really cool. Um, we've never done this in the past and it's cool to hear everyone's experience and uh, charity, like what the story behind the charity they picked. And um, obviously you guys that fished the tournament and uh, support it, supported it posted about it shared it um means a lot absolutely um well guys uh thank you all for coming on the show um i have uh i i've enjoyed uh doing this one i haven't had this many many people on one show before so i think uh I, th I think it went really well. It, it's always nice whenever uh, we can get this many people on a show and not feel like we're talking over everybody and and all that good stuff. So um, that's always that's always awesome. And uh, again, thank you all for coming on. And uh, I wish you all all the best in in uh, your future endeavors. And hopefully, uh, hopefully, I, I see y'all's name again on the catch uh catch tournament roster next year and at the end of the tournament i hope to see it below my name so <laughs> <laughs> i gave some secrets for our backyard so uh yeah you better be out there as long as it's it postponed again it's gotta it's gotta be uh november again, late october november yeah <laughs> it postponed this year yeah i postponed it several weeks just because it was like super super hectic I, I was dealing with a few things within that uh several weeks and it was hard for me to promote it and everything so i wanted to really uh promote it before the event started yeah and promotions everything mm -hmm. yeah we, we, we were joking that was the our saving grace that you know it kind of by that cold front coming through when it did it kind of knocked south texas florida south mississippi alabama all those guys out so kudos to you guys that, especially in alabama i don't know how far north you got but yeah, I know it was tough. That that changed everything. I mean, I knew mm -hmm. kind of. Oh yeah, it did. Yeah, sir. It was meant to be. Oh, I was I was hesitant to even fish when I saw Florida, California. I think there's somebody <laughs> California was on there, and I saw those. I was like, you know what? 
I mean, it's twenty dollars. Twenty dollars is twenty dollars. <laughs> Just yeah, let's go. I'm gonna fish. I have a reason to fish this weekend anyway. I mean, I never thought in a million years, you know, fishing in Florida fish. I'd have never thought I'd have had a snowball chance in Mississippi in July to compete with any of those guys. Uh, and then to see, I was sitting in third place until Dave finally submitted his fish, and then I got bumped fourth. But even still, I was like, "Hey, yeah, that's great." Okay, okay. Yeah, I I told everybody I was like, you know, it's a nationwide tournament, so I mean. I'm not going to compete with the guys in Texas and, and Florida being up here in North Carolina this time of year. So, I mean, it's like, you know, I'm, I'm donating to a charity. I'm just waiting to find out which which one, and I'm going to go out and fish for fun, but I'm, I'm not going to be able to, to compete with this. And then I'll be doggone to somebody just down the road from me didn't end up on in first place and made, <laughs> made a liar out of me. <laughs> it, it, was, it was really good to see. Uh, I mean, and it was a bunch of good fish caught. I mean, they wouldn't. It wasn't like a, a dink fest or nothing like that. I mean, there was a lot of quality fish caught. And I, I think, like Dave said, I think that cold front coming through, I mean, whether he was in front of the cold front or he was behind it, I really think that was what triggered the big girls to come up and play. Uh, um, they, uh, I know Friday and Saturday was a struggle because Friday I was pre-front and – it was just a struggle. The wind was blowing, starting to pick up. I was trying to find a place to get, and it was hard to get to where I needed to be. I was fishing windblown banks, and I was staying in the bank more than I was anything. I mean, I had spot lock on. I had my cruise control on and everything, trying to just stay with it, throw a spinner bait, beat the bank. But And then Saturday come around, and I just – it was another cold front coming Saturday. It's like a big cold front and then a little cold front right behind it. And so, you know, Saturday, I was like – I started out Saturday morning. It was like 50 – you know, mid fifty, low to mid fifties. I was like, it's gonna be all right. So I started coming out of my bibs and getting out of the clothes and I'm shedding layers. And then by like two o'clock, the sun gone, the clouds rolled in, the winds picked up, temperature starts falling. I was like, oh my god, it's gotten so cold. Like my feet were cold, my hands were cold. And I was like, at four o'clock, I was like, I can't even take it no more. I mean, I still got forty five minutes or so of daylight to try to catch some fish and try to put some on the board. I said, but I just can't handle it no more. And lo and behold, if I didn't, I was coming out of a pocket right there, and I said, I started graphing, and I seen a bunch of fish right there. I throw it off in there, pulled, pulled one largey out, and I was like, all right, there's just go the fish right here in the mouth of this pocket. We'll be fixing to fish it for a minute. Throwed it back in there, tried again. It was a crankbait, and I was running it, and now will be dang if it wasn't a school of striper. I just happened to be a sick, look, sickly looking fish down there with him, and he was just hungry, and I guess he was just eating anything that swam by him, and Oh, then the rest of them, I think I caught like four more strappers out of it. And I was like, man, screw it. I'm done. I'm going to the house. <laughs> I decided pretty much at that point, I was done. I was like, I, I might as well even fish tomorrow. I said, these, these fish are going to be lock jawed and I'll buy it. And then uh, I said, I'm going to go hit a state lake up. And that's where I went uh, Sunday. And that lake's known for having some big fish in it. And uh, uh, so I, I said, well, hopefully they're doing something down there. And, I mean, as soon as I put my boat in the water, it wasn't even daylight yet. I put my boat in the water. And I was eating out there, grabbing some spots that I had marked a couple years ago or a couple tournaments ago. And uh, they just they started busting top water. And I was like, okay. And I'm sitting there looking and watching my graph. And I'm seeing running bait balls just on my left side, on my right side, right under me. You could hear the shad bumping the bottom of the kayak. And I was like, all right, let's try this and see. So I started ripping a lipless through there. And I mean, it was... It was just, they started wearing it out. I mean, I just started catching them. I was like, okay, I'm on to something here. And uh, two, two, it might have been a week later. It was either one or two weeks later. I had a, that socks and cookie tournament that uh, it was just last one I won. And uh, I actually won it off that same lake. And I actually think I might have caught a couple of the same fish, to be honest with you. Uh, I had a 22 and a quarter, two 21 and a half, and uh, 19 and three quarters and a half. Love 17 and a half, I think, is what I was trying to call, but it was just, uh, you know, she was loaded up with some big girls, and it was a wild ride, but, you know, you know they, they won me some money, so I was all right with that. That's awesome. All right, y'all. Well, again, uh, thank y'all so much for coming on the show, and uh, wish y'all all the best. Yep, thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Appreciate you guys. Atolis, based out of Charleston, South Carolina, is an eyewear accessory and gear company focused on enhancing your time on the water. 
Their floating sunglass retainers are the most technically advanced around. Over five years of engineering, testing, and exhaustive feedback from paddlers, anglers, and watermen have resulted in a patented design and a class of its own. They're incredibly light and comfortable, built for durability, sport a sleek, minimal design, float virtually all brands and models of sunglasses, and they're back for life. So if you break them, Atollis will replace them, no questions asked. Whether you're fishing, kayaking, or boating, Atollis will save your shades from the dream. Head on over to atollas.co to check out their gear and use promo code FAITHINFISH15, that's FAITH, the letter N, FISH, the number 1, 5, at checkout to save 15% on your order. Get Outdoors Pedal and Paddle in Greensboro, North Carolina offers a wide range of products and services designed to help protect the environment and enhance the time people spend enjoying the outdoors. With an expansive year-round inventory of kayaks, sups, bikes, kayak fishing accessories, paddling clothing, biking accessories, and more, Get Outdoors has established itself as one of the top paddle sports and biking shops in the southeast. They also offer a wide range of kayak safety and technique courses to get you comfortable in your new boat. They'll even get it rigged up for you. Stop by the shop in Greensboro, North Carolina, or check them out at shopgetoutdoors.com. All right, another huge thank you to Jackson, Dave, uh, David, and uh, Kason for coming on the show and and uh, sharing about their their charities and the tournament, and uh, that was that was a fun one, man. Uh, Robert, uh, <laughs> that was a good one. That was a good one. I, I just got a little tickled because just to close the show out, you know, I mean, David just he just kind of it felt like we had Gerald Swindle on the show, and he was doing one of those on stage, just run on, like talking about his day. I don't know if you guys have ever watched any of those uh, those videos of him doing his uh, you know speech as he weighs in, but I feel like that's what David just just did and gave us the rundown uh, at the end of that. That was awesome. I mean, I I enjoyed it. It just got me tickled thinking about the you know because he's a either North Alabama or North, North Mississippi, but he's got that same accent, uh, that Swindle has. And, uh, it just got me tickled at the end of that. So, uh, that was a, a great way to, to end that, uh, show. And, uh, on a serious note, you know, that was a, it's an awesome tournament, um, that Jackson puts on every year. And I really think just sitting there with, with six people who, um, uh, or five people that were, were in it and Jackson, um, you know, really highlights kind of what the kayak, uh, tournament and, and club scene, that's what it is. I mean, just a bunch of guys, you know, whether you're at a campsite or, or, or whatever, it's just a, it's just a different feel. And, you know, just to hear those guys get fired up about the tournament and, and wanting to help Jackson grow it and, uh, you know, get some money for for whatever charities uh you know that goes to the winner's choice um uh, but I'm, i always look forward to that uh each year so i'm glad we were able to have all those guys on and uh look forward to doing it again next year absolutely and um like i said you know the main reason for this episode was to just kind of shine a spotlight on the charities that were chosen and uh and like I, like I said earlier, I will have all of those links uh, in the show notes so that uh, and, and information in the show notes so that if you heard of, heard about a charity on this show that you're like, man, that really that really speaks to me and I want to, to help out. I will have have that information so that you can do that. Um, but yeah, uh, Robert, did you uh, have anything to, to add on this one? No, man, I'm, I'm good to go, man. Awesome. Well, I will say, uh, because of the format of this one, I forgot to add uh, add those those two extra uh, uh, ads that would typically run in the middle there uh, to the to the uh, ads that we we did play. So, wanted to to shout out Jade's Jigs. Uh, use uh, use promo code uh, FNF 
FNF10, uh, FNF10 at checkout uh, there and um, and get yourself some uh, lead-free uh, eco-friendly jigs. And then uh, Mr. B Lure Company, uh, they have all of the phenomenal skirted and wired baits. Um, and use a uh, use promo code. Uh, you know, see, it's Faith and Fishing Pod One X One Zero um, for ten percent off your first purchase. So, um, go ahead and head over to that. And uh, Robert, you want to sign it off again? Uh, yeah, man. I mean, just great show, great week. Uh, you know, don't forget uh, we're taking a little break after this one, and then uh, we'll get some shows front loaded for January and February and uh ready to rock and roll in 2023 that's right well that's going to do it for this episode y'all um y'all take care and god bless thank you for listening to the faith and fishing podcast faith and fishing is produced and hosted by me cam Steele, and is sponsored by jade's jigs get outdoors pedal and paddle Savior Outdoors, Atolas, and Mr. B. Lure Company. Be sure to give us a rating and a review and to subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts. That's going to do it for this episode. Y'all take care and God bless.